In this video, we will talk about transporters. Transporters are very similar to resources in the process modeling library, but the particularity of them is that they transport in many different ways. So the first thing we need on a transporter model is the transporter fleet. This transporter fleet is what determines how the transporters are going to behave. And I build these paths here, like a network, in order to uh, move pallets from this node into this node. Nothing particular with this network, just randomly drawn with some curves in it and so on. Transporters are resources, but they have some difference that are quite important. First, you need you can choose the navigation type, either path guided, in which case you will follow the paths that are drawn uh, in the network, the same way you use you do in the process modeling library, or you can navigate on free space. This will absolutely ignore the paths and just move as long as there are no obstacles in, in the way. When you use path guided, obstacles are actually ignored. So you have to be careful with that. So as the same way it's done in, uh, in a resource pool, you choose the capacity uh, and you can choose the home location. Here we will choose this one as the home location. Then you have a minimal distance to obstacle. The only obstacle you, you have when you use path guided is the other transporters. And we'll see how they behave. Let's make five transporters here. And the transporters have their special agent type, which is the transporter type that carries all the transporter characteristics in order to be able to do everything that a transporter can do. Let's call this forklift and it's a forklift track. So the transporter fleet will be of type forklift and it will move pallets from one place to the other. With the transporters, you can be much more precise in this with the speeds. You can define a maximum speed, an acceleration, a deceleration, and a limit speed on curves. Now, the limit speed on curves is used in this kind of curves in the paths. Also, you have a delay for route calculation. For example, if you have an AGV that needs to calculate how to go from one place to the other, you can define an amount of time that it takes to calculate that route and use it here. And finally, you can define a custom routing where you can either uh, avoid paths, avoid nodes, include paths. So let's take that out for the moment and let's build the model. We will use a source and this will generate pallets. So let's create a material item type palette here and that's it this palette will be generated in this node and maybe 0.3 per second maybe it's too much but it doesn't matter so the new agent will be a palette and that's all we need to do for now to use the transporter fleet as a minimum you need the move by transporter which is equivalent to a service block but the service is actually moving something from from one place to the next you will always be attached to the agent and it will always move to the agent. And there's no preparation for the transport. So what do we have here? We can define a destination node. We can go here. And this is the same for this. Not, there's nothing special here. We can go to conveyors, paths, uh, attractors, and or a position. You have to always choose a fleet, which is the transporter fleet. And you can define a loading time, which is the time that the transporter takes to pick up the agent and an unloading time, which is, which is the time it takes for the transport to drop the agent. You also have the typical things with priority and preemption, uh, customize the transporter choice, the same way you do it with, um, with any resource in the process modeling library. And you also have a dispatching policy in order to choose the right transporter to take your agent from one point to the other. So you can choose the nearest agent, the transporter that has the shortest path towards the agent. You also have the most preferred depending on certain conditions uh, where unit one and unit two are different transporters. Uh, you have transported with top rating. You can define a variable in the transporter that has a certain value and use, for example, unit.rating uh, if your forklift has 
the rating variable in it and it will choose the one with highest value as long as that transporter is free to be used. Then you have an off which chooses the transporter absolutely randomly. Let's use nearest to the agent for, for now. We don't need to do anything else. Now the move by transporter can be used as a cease move and release or as only some of them. That's why you can select this as cease transporter or not. But if you don't, you need to actually cease the transporter somewhere. So you will need to use the cease transporter and for the release, you will need to use the release transporter. So that's a difference compared to the process modeling library. You can choose what the move by transporter is equ equivalent to, but as a maximum, it can be a cease, a move and a release. Now let's place a sync and we are ready to run this model. So this model is pretty simple. And the only thing that is interesting to watch here is that the forklifts are stopping when they are in front of each other because they don't want to collide. So it's the equivalent of them trying to figure out how to move when they are close to each other. Now let's see how the maximum speed on curves work. Like, let's put 0 0.1 here just to see how the, the speed on curves actually takes place. So you can see here that the, whenever it arrives here, it starts going really slowly. But you can see here that in the curve, this forklift doesn't change its behavior. But there's a slight change in behavior here because there's also a curve. So in nodes where there's a little curve, they will change their behavior also in this kind of curves, but not in here because no curve is defined. So we have to be careful about that. It's a bit sometimes counterintuitive, but that's how it is. So let's put this back to one. Also, you have the option to make a custom routing. This means that you can avoid paths, avoid nodes and so on. So let's try to avoid paths. Let's avoid these paths. This means that the guys can only take this one and this one in order to reach the destination. And there you go. These guys are not going to take any other path over that one. Now let's add uh, some obstacles to see what happens. For you can use conveyors as obstacles. Let's put it here. And it is defined as an obstacle here, right? So it should work. But when you use paths, as I said, the model doesn't care about having obstacles or not. Let's remove this for now without custom routing. And let's run the model. So you can see that these guys don't care about the obstacle because the paths, paths are defined like that. So it will be your fault because you need to define paths that are actually possible. Nevertheless, if you use free space, first you will see that you have a, a, the option to limit speed near the obstacle. And you also, the, also the, the speed on curves is not there anymore. So this speed on curves, maximum speed on curves only applies if you use paths. So let's try what happens when the, you use free space. These guys will avoid the obstacle at any cost. And that's it, easy. Of course, you can define this as not an obstacle. And in that case, the forklets will ignore this conveyor being there 